Clutter in charts is overwhelming and confusing. To make things easier for our audience, we should strip away the unessential elements in the chart to allow the data to stand out and make it easier to interpret. After removing the items taking up space but not adding information value, we now have something more simplified that we can actually make sense of without getting a massive headache. Hi, I'm Amy. In this video, I will show you how to do decluttering steps in your Excel charts. Now, this topic was a special request from a recent workshop participant. Now, if you have additional requests for data visualization or Excel related videos, please enter them in the comment section. Tell us what you'd like to see next. Let's first discuss why decluttering our charts is important. Every element in our data visualizations introduce cognitive burden for our audience, which means that they need to extend mental effort to make sense of it. Therefore, when we communicate with data, we should be thoughtful about what we are including so we do not overwhelm. If we make our audience work too hard to understand what they are looking at, they could choose to give up and move on to something else. Now, unfortunately, many graphing tools like Excel can start us off in a not great place. Frequent source of clutter in our data visualizations come from unnecessary graph elements, such as borders, grid lines, data markers, excess use of color, and the like. So in this video, I am going to be using a chart from exercise 3.9 of the Storytelling with Data Let's Practice book. With this example, I will show you how to eliminate these unnecessary elements from your Excel graphs. I'll also give you a tip to speed up the declutter process going forward. So let's dive in. So to begin, let's remove this chart border as it isn't adding any information value. Often we use borders to differentiate parts of our visuals and our slides, but in most cases we can better set them apart with white space, which is what we'll do here. So click on the chart and navigate to the format ribbon. And there you will see the outline section, click that and select no outline. Now I'm going to delete the grid lines and the shaded background in the chart. Your audience will likely not be physically dragging their fingers across the grid line to identify the exact value. So we don't need them here. So to remove them, we can simply click on the grid line so they're highlighted and then hit the delete key. Now for the shaded section, click in that area to get it highlighted and then go back to the format ribbon and under shape fill, select no fill and for the outline, pick no outline. Now those two simple changes have an immediate impact on this visual and reduce a lot of cognitive burden, but we can do more. So let's continue and let's focus now on the axes and do some cleanup here. Now there's a number of improvements we can make to the axes, starting with the Y axes. Let's eliminate some of these extraneous zeros. They add a lot of cognitive burden, but not a ton of value. We could format the numbers here instead to make it easier. So to do that, click into the Y axis, right click, and then format axes. And under the display units in the middle of the format pane, select the thousands drop down. That eliminates the zeros, but we want to make it clear that we're dealing with thousands here and I'm going to use the title space for something else. So let's adjust the number. If you scroll down to that menu under format code and we add the letter K after and hit add. Now it becomes more apparent that we're dealing with thousand units. Speaking of the title, I'm going to drag this over a bit and adjust the title that is here. I'm going to call it number of cars sold. I'm going to do that all in caps. There is a blog post on how we title things and how we align things that I'll reference here. So if you want to learn more about it, I recommend checking it out. I am going to do some formatting. I'm going to make this bold. Um, I'm going to use the Arial font and I'll make it a little bit bigger, 12 point. I'll make it the same gray color as the axes. Actually, I'm going to adjust my axes to also be 12 points so it's readable. We can align the labels here. Now with the Y axis short up, let's turn our attention to the X axis. You'll see we have diagonal labels. So we have to turn our head to read. The studies show that it takes 50% longer to read diagonal text. So here we can adjust the labels and just use the abbreviations for the month. 
So to do that, we go to the data table and change the month columns to be abbreviations. I also want to adjust the x-axis so that the tick marks align with the data points. You see now that they're a little off center. So to do that, right click, select format axis and under the axis position, select on tick marks so they're aligned. You can also fix the title of the x-axis, capitalize it, make it the same color as the rest of the axis and align it. Actually, I'm going to pull it down a little bit. Now let's look at these data labels. You can't help but notice them. We have a lot of data labels here and they're outlined. Now, if that level of specificity is important, then keep the labels. But we should think critically if that level of specificity is needed. Instead, we should sparingly use labels to avoid an overwhelming feeling. We we'll use them in cases where the exact values are important to the audience. And when we do so, if we are gonna label everything, then you might eliminate the y-axis. In this case, I'm going to do the reverse. I'm going to eliminate the data labels and keep the y-axis. So to delete the data labels, just click on any one of them until they're all highlighted and hit delete. Do that for both series. I also am going to eliminate the data markers here because they're not adding a ton of information value and we can click on them in the format pane, go to the little paint can and you'll see a line and marker option. We want to go down to the marker options and pick none and highlight the data markers on the other line and do the same thing. So this is looking much better already, but we can make it easier for our audience to understand by taking it a step further. Next, I wanna turn your attention to the legend at the bottom and know how much, notice how much work it is to move from the legend at the bottom and back to the lines. Instead, we can choose to label these lines directly to make it less work for our audience to go back and forth. Now, there are a couple of ways that you can do this. I'm gonna to opt to adjusting the data labels so to do that, I'm going to click twice on the end data point, then right click and select add data label. So you see that the 86 popped up. I can double click on the 86 and that will allow me to change it to 2020 to match the line. I'm going to make this font a little bit bigger so that it stands out. And I'm also going to opt to make it the same color as the line. I'll squish this over to make room for those. Then repeat for the other line. Add the data label, change the text to 2021, make the font larger and match the color. I'm also going to make both of these Arial to match the rest of the graph. And now we can click on the legend and delete it because we don't need it anymore. Now the final change is to adjust the title. So here I'm going to change the title itself and I'm also going to align it to the upper left most part of the graph because studies show that we read our charts like we read books and that's left to right top to bottom. So let's create that framing and also make that ease of use to read. And I'm going to adjust the title here. Instead of monthly vehicle sold trends, I'm going to call it cars sold by month. And we can adjust the font again to make it more legible and to match the format of the rest of the chart. Now this is better, but we can take it a step further and highlight to our audience what they should take away. So maybe instead of cars sold by month, I could use the title that said cars sold decreased in 2021. And I can change the color of the 2021 text in the title to match the data series itself. And to make that line stick out further, I could even adjust the weight to thicken it so that your attention is drawn there. So that was a number of changes, pretty small changes that you don't necessarily want to go through every time that you create your chart. So if these are changes you would make to every single line chart you create, you could develop a template, a chart template. And to do that, you simply right click in your chart and select save as template and then name it anything that you would like. Let's just call it clean lines and click OK. Then your template becomes immediately available to you if you highlight the data and go to the insert ribbon. Then you can find under charts, templates, clean lines. So to learn more about chart templates and download an example of one, you can check out our blog post about clean slate template. Check out the impact when we apply all seven steps 
simultaneously. Each step seems rather minor on its own, but together they allow the data to stand out and make less work for the audience to understand what they're looking at. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other declutter video for more examples and in-depth details. We have also other Excel videos, so check those out in our tutorial playlist. Thanks for watching. Thank you.